Oh yeah. Sir. All right, awesome. Well, let's get rolling. All right, so this is part four, but like I, I told a couple of you, um, definitely if you've missed some of the other ones, I'm gonna kind of run through just a quick recap. And this was actually a really good one. Lots of good tactics in here, I think. Um, and so also I wanna encourage you guys you know, to go listen to Ben Kinney because he's a lot better than me. And <laughs> you can also share this, um, you know, with other people. So if you have a spouse or significant other, that's part of your, you know, financial planning, I would encourage you guys to share this with them because the podcast is pretty interesting to listen to too. And um, last thing would be that I definitely don't want to do all the talking today. So I do a pretty good job of calling people out and, and forcing you to interact, but certainly don't hesitate to interrupt me or ask questions as I'm going through if something pops in your mind. So um, basically, this is obviously based on the Ben Kinney series. The thing I like to point out, even though Ben Kinney runs the number one team within Keller Williams, he literally grew up with nothing. So if you've never heard his story, he lived with his, his parents were divorced and he lived with his dad. I think his dad had full custody and his mom just had him like every other weekend and one day a week. But him and his dad lived a large portion of his childhood in a cabin with no electricity or running water. And they got all of their money, you know, they were on food stamps. And so most of their food came from the food pantry. And so I think it's really interesting. You know, it's one thing for, I didn't grow up anything like that. I wouldn't say that I was completely spoiled, but compared to that, I was completely spoiled. Um, and so I think putting context though, on the fact that he's giving us these pieces of advice, having come from, you know, living on nothing, it kind of puts things into perspective a little bit as we talk about what's required versus what's optional in terms of expenses. It looks like I have a blank slide here for some reason, but I'm just gonna skip over that. So I went over this in the first one, um, but I thought it would be a good thing to revisit and because I just love the idea. And I, really, I think when we approach anything like this, especially when we've been doing something for a really long time and created a habit around it, we have to remember that really our mindset is the driving force behind things. And if we don't change our attitude, and our perspective on what what we're, we've been doing, it's very unlikely that what we actually want to accomplish is going to happen in the long term. And I love the fact, I love the idea that he talks about um, around um, around water and the fact that it's that you know putting water into a bucket is much like your mindset. And that basically your mindset is what shapes your view of the world. So if you truly believe in your heart of hearts that going to Starbucks every day is a necessity that you can't live without, then it's going to be really hard to justify day in and day out not going to Starbucks in order to save money. So the question is, how do you get your mindset into a place where, you know, where you're willing, where you're willing to do that? Um, yeah, I'm definitely, sorry guys. I tried to copy these and it's not doing what I thought it was gonna do. So really the goal of the series is to take you through a number of exercises to help you self-discover because the reality is, and most of you guys know this, you've been taking classes from me and other people long enough that sitting in a class but not taking any action on it isn't gonna do you any good. So. We can have our head filled with a lot of really great ideas, and yet if we never take action on it, it's not really going to do any good for us. So, so I love his definition of wealth, and it's the it's the de the definition that really I've lived by. And he defines wealth as being the ability to do what I want, when I want, and with whom I want. And and he also points out that this is really the definition of freedom. And so. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people consider wealth to be like, yeah, you have to have a mansion and you have to have a yacht and you have to not be working and you have to be doing all these things. And I think for a lot of us, realistically, like we would be happy with much, much less. And most of those things are material things. 
Um, I don't have a link to it in here, but I'll send it out to you guys. Um, he also recently interviewed a guy who retired or him and his wife both quit their job at 35. Um, and he joked about the fact that obviously he's well past 35. I'm past 35. I don't know if we have anybody in here that's under 35. Um, so, but he, he titled the podcast, how to retire in five years, because obviously if you're not 35, you still might want to retire in five years. And it really is interesting how it lines up so much with what he did here. And he interviewed him actually after he did this podcast. So you should check, check that one out as well. Um, so, so I, the, the title of this episode was saving like crazy. And so he basically runs through two or three different models, which we're going to go into in a second on saving like crazy, but I wanted to real quick, just, um, kind of point out the three basis of our conversation. And these are things that if you've been joining us are things that we've talked about before but really narrowing into what are your required monthly expenses. And so when he, when he talks about required, I think one of the best ways to define what's required is to define what's not required. And so he considers anything to be, that's like what he calls a lifestyle expense to be not required. So your required are gonna be like your rent, your utilities, um, your mortgage payment, if you don't rent, obviously like your car payment, your gas, like those things that if you didn't have them, you either, you know, wouldn't be living like a, a reasonable lifestyle. You wouldn't have a roof over your head or you couldn't make money due to them. Everything else is a, is a, a non-essential, non-required or lifestyle expense. So things like Netflix, although most of us may think Netflix is a required expense, it, it's not. Even things like Audible, you know, for me, I love listening to books. Um, and so for me, Audible feels like a required expense. But what is there another way, you know, that I could still get learning in without paying for Audible if I had to? Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, things that gym memberships, different things like that. Is there a, a free app, which there is, I found during COVID, that's a home workout app that you can do. And it actually works pretty well with no weights. I was like, man, this is crazy. I never realized I could work out this hard um, with, with literally no weights and be sore the next day. Um, so those types of things that really feel required, but at the end of the day, they're really not. And then the last thing are, is gonna be the third bucket and that's saving, investing, and then giving expenses. Now, obviously, if you guys have ever gone and listened to Ben's podcast, the name of it is Win, Make, Give. Um, and those are, those are fundamental truths in his world across all of his, I mean, I think he owns like 15 different businesses and all of them, you know, live those. And he's actually, if you go to family reunion or mega camp and you hear um, the fact that the, the triangle um, having to do with the different levels of the millionaire real estate agent got a, a level added onto it that was give a million. Um, so it's, it's net, it's uh, make a million, net a million, um, and that earn a million, or I'm sorry, it's earn a million, net a million, and then give a million. And that give a million came from a conversation between Ben Kinney and Gary Keller where he said, well, you know, once his business was netting a million, what was going to be the next domino that he wanted to knock down? And that was to give a million. He's a super, super philanthropical person. He's a great guy. Um, if you haven't tell, if you can't tell, I love Ben Kinney. Um, <laughs> and Gary so, Keller. <laughs> um, the next, so the first model that he talks about is what he calls the 50, 25, 25 model. And so what that, what that says is that basically 50% of your monthly take home and make sure that you recognize the fact that it's your take home and not your gross. So as self-employed individuals, this can be a little bit more difficult to calculate, but the best way to calculate it is if you've been in real estate for at least one year, or let's say if you've been in real estate and filed your taxes once, you, the easiest way to look at it is to go back 
and look at your um, effective tax rate on your federal return and then add probably 5% as a safe number that would you know, factor in what your city taxes were and also your state taxes, although right now, at least current Ohio tax model, if you're self-employed, you get a lot of really good benefits. Um, but I would take your effective tax rate from your federal return and add about 5% onto that. And that would be how much you need to subtract off of your gross income that you bring in after your split with the office to, to be your basis. So let's say that after, after tax, let's say you, your tax bracket is 25% total, just to make easy math, and your expenses are, you know, your required expenses are going to be um, $3,500 because your total that you bring in, let's actually say your effective rate's 30, just to make it easier math. So that leaves you, if you make 10,000, you subtract the 30%, that's 7,000 left. That would mean that you would have 3,500 per month to put towards any bills that you have that are quote unquote required expenses. Okay. And then the second part of that, you're gonna take the 25% and that's gonna be the amount that you're gonna give yourself for lifestyle or non-required um, expenses. So those are going to be things that are completely voluntary. So that's going to be all your restaurant expenses, all any gym expenses, um, fun things that you're doing, kids sports, all of that stuff need to be need to be put into that bucket. And then in order to figure out how much you have each month, you're going to have to take like, or each week, you know, for going out to eat or for Starbucks or all of those things, then you're going to have to take that percentage and divide it by uh, 4.33. And that'll give you what you can spend per week on, on non-required or lifestyle expenses. And then the last 25% of income you're going to use for savings, investing, and giving. Now, obviously, if you're, if you're a Christian and you believe that 10% of your income should be tithed, then that's what, you know, that, that number is going to get taken right off the top there. So then it comes down to 15% um, that you have left for savings and other income. So then you look at that other 25 and decide where your, where your non-required expenses are. Um, and then if you're self-employed, which obviously you guys are, another easy way, if you're like, hey, I'm setting my goals for the future, you take your monthly required expenses and double it. And that's the number after taxes that you need in revenue that you're choosing to require your business to make to get ahead. So that would be another way to look at it. If you're like, oh my gosh, my income is so sporadic and crazy, I don't even know where to start. Or if you're newer in the business, then you take that required monthly expense and double it. And then obviously you're gonna have to add on to that what you would have to pay in taxes. And that's gonna be the gross number that you need to make after your split with the office to, um, to move forward. So I'm going to stop there real quick. I know I just threw out a lot of formulas and numbers at you. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? Is anybody living that model at all? Has anybody ever heard of it or used it? So I'm on, um, I think I'm on, I've already finished the wealth series. Um, I need, I need to go back and endure the game side. Like I would listen to it when I was walking and stuff, but um, he's got just as an FYI on his website, you can literally download like all the calculators and stuff to plug in everything that like you need. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The winmakegive.com and sign up for the wealth series and it'll, it's in there. Um, you're, yeah. you're exactly right, Patrick. He has all those spreadsheets and they're, they work really well. 
So that's, I appreciate you bringing that up. Are you, um, have you picked anything, Patrick, to go with? And if not, are you like thinking about going with one of these? Um, I, I probably actually need to go back and listen to that one just because like I, I wasn't doing it when I like at a computer. I was like doing it when I was out like walking. So I need to go back and see like which model I need to, to use. Um, I've kind of just been recently just thrown a lot of money at like debt to get it paid off, but I haven't really been following one of those models like I should. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. He talked about the fact that he was saving, like at the beginning, he was just saving 50 bucks a month, you know, and, but over time, you know, it adds up. So, all right. And then model two, he calls the 80, 10, 10, which you can probably kind of guess what that is. Um, you'll love on, you'll live on and pay all personal expenses required and non-required um, with 80% of your income. And then that leaves 10% of income to save and invest. And then another 10% to either get, you know, go to giving extra debt pay down or extra savings and investment. So that one's a little bit easier, but remember all of this is based off of your, your adjusted gross, meaning after taxes. Because if you, if you try to do this on your total gross, you're gonna run into some challenges when it comes time to pay taxes. And real estate agents know all about that. So, all right, so which model to choose? One of the things I loved about what he said was that he talked about the specific model is less important, but choosing a model or system is the important thing. And I love this quote, and I don't know who, who it's attributed to, he didn't say it, but systems make the ordinary extraordinary. And I think a lot of us don't naturally think in terms of systems. And so it's super important, even though it seems it may seem elementary to you, like the 80, 10, 10, or the 50, 25, 25. Try not to make things too complicated um, because the more complicated they are, the less that we're gonna be likely to, to use it. And so we just need to make sure that we're choosing at least one system. And in the beginning, adjust it as necessary to fit your current situation and then work towards being better. So it might mean choosing to live on a 95.5 this month with the goal to get to an 80.10.10 next month or six months from now or whatever that looks like. Because obviously each one of us is in a different situation in terms of where our income is. Um, obviously we've had a, an interesting year to say the least. And so as we you know, as you look at your current situation, if you've gone through your expenses, which we're going to jump into in a second, um, you know, and you truly just, you're almost living on your required expenses, that 95.5 might, might be the way that you have to go, but see what you can do to either use the, all that extra to pay off debt or to, you know, to pick up some extra income somewhere, which we'll talk about later. So, the homework is, and Patrick, this is for you, buddy, because you already listened to it and you haven't taken action on it, but find out today how much money you can actually save this month and hold yourself accountable to doing that. And then ask yourself based on, based on episode two, which was, or three, which was how to save for retirement and how to calculate that. Does, does the amount of savings that I'm actually saving now get me to where I want need to be in order to achieve my retirement goals? And if the answer is no, then we're gonna continue talking about ways that we can get you closer to that. And just remember, it doesn't have to happen overnight. It's just like a diet or anything else. You didn't gain the weight overnight and you're not gonna lose the weight overnight we didn't get into this situation overnight and we're not going to get out of it overnight. And sometimes, um, especially in real estate, I find that we, patience is not a virtue. Many of us uh, uh, put high on our list. And so just make sure that you're sticking with your system. 
So one thing that I thought was super interesting and very applicable is that a lot of us, you know, who maybe went out a lot more and were leaving the house more consistently prior to COVID aren't doing it as much right now. And so have we gotten out of the habit of going to Starbucks and instead making coffee at home? You know, let's make sure that even if we start to get out more, that we stick to that habit and we don't just fall back into the old habits. Are we, you know, carrying out instead of dining in? Um, if you're somebody that enjoys to have a glass of wine or a beer with a meal, um, have you ever looked at the tab afterwards and realized that you spent just as much on alcohol as you did on food? And so what does that look like if you carry out the food and have a glass of wine at home, you know, where a bottle costs as much as the glass at the restaurant. Um, so those are small things, but things that definitely make a difference. So, um, and if you've gotten used to living without something, be very cognizant of that and be purposeful about making that a habit that continues even as you go out. So this is a little bit of review from, from episode two, but it's learning to save like a professional. So again, if you didn't do this, go back and do it. If you did do this, that was a, almost a month ago. So now it's been a month, print out your newest credit card statement and your newest bank statement and go ahead and look at what it looks like this month and make sure, hey, did I go ahead and cancel all those things that were expenses that I could live without. So just as a re recap, print out your bank statement and credit card statements, or plural, and grab three highlighters, one green, one yellow, and one red. You highlight green, are those required? You can't live without expenses. Yellow are the things that either you could negotiate, potentially go without, or switch to a better service. So, you know, has it, have you had the same cable company for four years? Most likely if the answer is yes and you haven't called to renegotiate your rate, you're paying way more than you have to. So if cable still fits into your budget, make sure that you call and get the best and get the best price um, that you possibly can. And then red are the things that you know that you can either stop spending right now or that you absolutely just haven't used in forever, but you never took the time to cancel it. All right, anybody else have any comments? Has anybody gone through this exercise? And if so, would you be comfortable sharing what you, what if anything you were able to cut out? Um, so I kind of, I didn't go through it a hundred percent, but like I went through, like just the other day I was looking on, at my bank statement and was kind of going through it just to see what had come out and stuff like that, make sure nobody was charging me for anything that shouldn't be on there. And I just realized that my, I don't have cable, I just have internet. I realized that my bill, I was in a contract with AT&T for a year and my bill just went up $10 a month because I'm no longer in a contract. And so that was actually on my thing, my list of things to do is call them. I mean, it's trivial, it's $10 a month, but like that's $120 a year that could go into like a savings or paying off debt. Um, so, and then I also paid off one of my student loans and that saves me $25 a month. So then I started, I took that and rolled it over into the, into the other student loan, not really savings, but it kind of is in a way. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it, it's saving in the long run, right? Anybody yeah. else? Well, I've been in the process of doing this kind of all year and I've gotten rid of most um, of those kind of subscriptions and so forth that you just let ride um, over time and you know do you don't need and you don't even use sometimes um, my biggest one right now I'm trying to figure out how to how to cut you know the cable um, thing I just can't I haven't been able to figure out what internet um, to go with because like spectrum um, if you're an existing customer and doesn't want to give you a, a break at all on, on internet compared to somebody that was new. Um, but I, where I'm living, I don't have wow. And, um, I'm not too sure that AT&T is a good choice. 
Um, so I'm trying to figure out the internet part and then I'm going to cut this because I saw the landline. We're cutting that out as soon as we make this decision and then we're going to get rid of cable and, uh, and just have internet. And it's kind of a mess to try to figure all that out, especially if you don't focus on it. It is, you know, one thing that's coming, it's supposed to be coming by the end of the year, but Elon Musk, is is launching all these satellites you may have like seen blurbs about them but not really known what it was and i forget patrick i know you're a tacky guy do you remember is it like stargazer or something is the name of his his oh uh, I, I don't know i, I know what you're talking about because that's why he launched the spacex or whatever and sent that rocket into space or whatever recently yeah, so one of the things, and I didn't know this until recently, we have trouble getting internet at our lake house. And so I was talking to um, to somebody down there and basically just, I'll, I kind of geek out on this stuff. So I will take a couple seconds to explain, but basically traditional satellite internet companies launched the satellites way up into like the outer orbit of the earth. And so the reason why satellite internet has been so slow is because of the distance the information has to travel to get to the satellite, but it allows fewer satellites to cover a larger area. Well, Elon Musk is launching like, eventually there'll be thousands of satellites in the lower orbit of the earth that basically will make satellite internet. You'll be able to get, I think a terabyte per second. Um, back and forth and so that's supposed to be live as soon as like this summer he's supposed to start trials and then by the end of the year that's supposed to be an option and I believe the unlimited on that is going to be 80 bucks a month um, and so it's going to change the world really because right now there's no like high speed internet really that you can get from satellite and it's a lot of it is based on how many people are on kind of like AT&T. That's one of the challenges is they use DSL. So if more people are using it, it slows down your speed. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting. It, it's one of those things that I think was just a way for him to fund his space program to get to Mars, but it could change the world <laughs> really um, just as kind of a byproduct to it. So anyways, that was a rabbit hole but well and real quick too for like people that don't like cutting cable like maybe you could cut the cable i know my parents have cable and they told me what they pay and i like i was just blown away because i haven't had cable in probably i'd say probably 12 years or 13 years something like that um but you know like uh sling is a good alternative to to cable um you still get some decent channels but it's only like 35 bucks a month you know, so you're not giving up everything all at once. You know what I mean? It's kind of like dieting where like, if you just say you're going to diet and you're going to exercise, you're probably not going to do either. Um, that's a good alternative to if for people who don't like, who don't want to get rid of the cable. Yeah. The challenge is, is that when you have internet cable and phone, like if you get rid of phone and cable, internet still ends up caught. It, like you ended up only paying like 20 bucks for phone and depend, you know, as long as you don't have a, as long as you don't have like tons of premium channels or anything. So, okay, cool. Well, I already talked about this. Obviously the reality of going broke, you don't end up broke in one month, just like you don't end up gaining a bunch of weight in one month. It's usually been small decisions that you've made day in and day out. Ben Kinney is not the uh, smallest guy. So he used the analogy of eating one cupcake a day. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, and he loves hamburgers too. So he jokes about that a lot, but you know, it wasn't one hamburger that made you what you are today, but it was eating a hamburger a day for the last five years that made you what you are today. Um, yeah, the, co the compound effect that book explains that very well. Exactly, exactly. But I think the other problem is, is that we like to act like we got that way in one day. So we think we should get back in one day and it's just not realistic. So, all right. So he, he um, then breaks us down. As you guys know, he loves his lists, which I actually like them too. It makes creating these 
talks a lot easier. So 10 ways to save like a pro. So the first thing is, is pay yourself first. So like we talked about, how much do you need to pay your required expenses? And then the second thing is make a budget and stick to it. Um, so just do it for one month and see how it feels because sometimes I think you say like, oh, I could never do that. I could never only go out to eat once a month, for example. Like the guy who retired in five years, he, he took, he said that literally before he got married, him and his roommate went out to, to eat for lunch and dinner every day. And he said, I'm not exaggerating when I said I never cooked in my oven one time. Um, and now, even though he still loves going to restaurants, when he was in like ultra saving mode, he limited his going out budget to $50 a month. So he went from wow. eating out <laughs> twice a day to only spending $50 a month. But, but maybe it looks like backing that down if you're somebody that does. I mean, I know, Don, you're, you live by yourself and it, sometimes it doesn't make sense to go to the store and make a meal for one person. And so it can get easy to like go out. So what does it look like to meal prep, you know? So where you can use like the chicken for like four or five different things and spend, you know, whatever. But just do it for a month and see how it feels and see if you can create that new habit. The next thing is, um, I already said that, consolidate or eliminate debt. So by looking at your highest interest rate and calling those companies and keeping in mind that everything's negotiable. So if you're somebody that has credit card debt or a lot of credit card debt, and maybe you're frustrated by the fact that 30% of every payment is going to pay interest, you know, don't hesitate to call and see if you can get, you know, especially if you've been paying consistently a lot of times they'll work with you on that stuff, but you never get it unless you ask. Um, so everything's negotiable. Obviously, Jack, it sounds like you've called Spectrum, but you know those types of things, a lot of times if you call in, um, just like Patrick did, he was able to save 10 bucks a month, um, or is gonna save 10 bucks a month just by calling in and renewing the contract. And if you're not gonna get rid of it, yeah, my, my impression from Spectrum is they're not going to negotiate with me until I've actually canceled. <laughs> but I don't want to cancel unless I've got internet. <laughs> right, right. That makes sense. Well, maybe you just need to cancel for like two days and use your hotspot on yeah. your phone. <laughs> um, all right, so pay attention to the little things that add up. So we talked about a lot of bigger things such as, you know, cutting out restaurants completely and things like that. But what does, um, you know, when you do go to Starbucks, getting, getting the grande instead of the venti or get, or, you know, choosing to only go to Starbucks a couple times a week instead of every day, or, you know, again, maybe um, eating in instead of eating out. So those are all easy things. Does anybody else have any other examples of small things that you, that you do all the time and they're so small that, you know, it's death by a thousand cuts? I think all the apps that we pay for on um, iTunes. <laughs> yeah. You know, Apple, yeah, there's, you gotta watch those. I like Apple Music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing, too, to remember I mean, a lot of them are monthly to keep this cost small, but some of them are annual. So, you know, it breaks it down when you pay for it and it lets you, you know, save 10 bucks if you pay for it for a year. But if you don't cancel it before the year, so the next step of that whole debt reduction is actually to go back 12 months and look at your statements and make sure there isn't something that's about to get charged again next month if you don't cancel it. You know, and if it's an annual subscription, it could be 60 or 100 or 150 bucks um, and you haven't used the app in forever. I think right after COVID started, there was an agent that went on and she was able to save like, three or $4,000, 
because she had that many apps between the monthly charges and the ones that renew annually that she was able to save. Um, all right, the next one, take advantage of employer or government opportunities. So obviously, um, as self-employed individuals, you may not have, you know, an employer match or something like that. But when I when we talk about government opportunities, definitely taxes. You know, have you gone to a class about ways that you can save money as a um, you know as a 1099? Is starting an LLC and being able to take advantage of that? Like for me, a few years ago three years ago, um, four years ago, maybe I, um, I bought a truck and the IRS has kind of what I consider to be a little bit of a loophole where if you buy a truck that's over six tons that, um, you buy in the name of your business, you can write off up to $25,000 of that purchase, that vehicle purchase. Um, and so things like that, that you can do to, uh, you know, to offset expenses and, you know, that the tax bill is probably your largest expense that you have. So what things that you're going to do anyways, you know, can you spend an extra, you know, couple thousand dollars on the, and buy the next bigger SUV and be able to take advantage of that tax break versus buying, you know, the smaller one, which seems to make sense on paper, but um, wouldn't allow you to take advantage of that. Um, and you also have opportunities at being self-employed to start your own retirement funds. And you have advantages that someone who's a W-2 employee doesn't necessarily have but you've got to go talk to somebody. If you're just using TurboTax to do your taxes, you're probably not going to get, get to take advantage of that. So look for either CE classes or um, just go pay to talk to a really qualified accountant. Um, number seven, stop collecting stuff and start selling stuff. Um, so it can be an extra way to bring in the income. So as you're going through your basement, even though it's a little bit of extra work, instead of just throwing it away or giving it away, put it on Facebook Marketplace or put it on Craigslist and see if you can get, you know, a few bucks for things um, in order to, to make some extra money to pay off debt faster. Um, we've talked about this one a lot. So eating in instead of dining out. I thought this was really, really smart. And obviously, if you don't have kids or they're already grown, it's probably not going to work. But maybe you could do this for yourself. Every time you have a desire to go get ice cream or get Starbucks, make a commitment to yourself that if you don't go, you'll put 50% of that into your savings account. Or if you have kids into their savings account, or if you have a spouse that likes to spend money, or, you know, and who knows, maybe, Don, it would work for your grown kids <laughs> if instead of going out to dinner, they make you dinner and you'll give them 50% of the bill that you always pay for whenever you take them out. I mean, I know when I was in college, I probably would have made my parents dinner if I had that worked out. Um, so it's just, it's an interesting way and it's teaching your kids how to save money and think that way, which was really, I never heard that before. Um, so save your excess income. And this is one that as agents, we, we can definitely relate with. So how many times do you get bonuses or you have that extra, you know, maybe your goal every month is, you know, that you need to make $10,000 a month but this month you make 20 because you have a couple extra closings or you've capped. And so you have extra money that, you know, you previously wouldn't have had. Um, instead of spending that money, you know, set that aside and use that to improve your financial situation, whether it's a lump sum into savings or a lump sum to pay off debt, just because you have a closing, don't go out and you know, and buy an extra closing, don't go out and buy something, do something to improve your position. And then the last one, which is probably the most useful one out of any of them is master what he calls the 30 day rule. 
Um, and Jay Papazan talks about this a lot. I know Ben Kenny and Jay Papazan are, um, are good friends, so I'm not sure which one of them came up with it. But wait 30 days to decide on any big purchases. And even if you can't wait 30 days, you know, whenever you're on Amazon, put it in the cart and then come back to it in one or two days after the emotion of feeling like you need it is gone and see if you still want to spend that money bad enough to press the buy button. There's a reason why Amazon created the buy now button because every single step that you have to go through when you purchase something, it's another opportunity for you to recognize that you might not need it. And so the buy now button is not there on accident or for your convenience. <laughs> it's there, and I would love to see the statistics, which I'm sure are not public, but I can guarantee you that the number of times that things get taken out of the cart when you have to go through the normal process versus the buy now button is significant. Um, so definitely if you're very impulsive, like Ashley, my wife, I love her very much, but she is like, when she decides, like I always say, she never comes home from the car dealership without a car. Like Ashley is going to the car dealership <laughs> Like she is buying a car. She will make 50 <laughs> concessions in order to drive a car home today. Um, whereas I'm like the complete opposite. So we don't even go car shopping together. When she bought her last car, I was just like, you know what, just go. I trust you, text me before you buy something and just at least the price. Um, but beyond that, like she just, I drive her nuts and she drives me nuts when it comes <laughs> to those types of things. So we just agree on a budget and she goes by herself. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. So. Hey, Troy, real quick on, um, with adding stuff to your cart, what I've found is if you get pretty much through the checkout and you don't buy it, but you've already entered all your information and you leave it in the cart, You'll usually get an email later or in a couple of days from the company offering you a discount on that same uh, thing that you were buying. So that's also a really, like if you really do want it, that's also a really good way to get a discount is just keep it in the cart and then put all your information in and then don't pay for it. Cause they, I, I, nine times out of 10, it works for me. They'll send me an email with a, with a discount code. Nice. That's an Amazon hack. I don't know if it's Amazon. It's definitely like just other websites. I've never tried it on Amazon, but I've definitely tried it on other sites and it usually works. Oh, like, uh, so if you don't go through Amazon, but go through the actual seller. Or yeah, like what I, I can't remember what I bought recently, but I was buying something and, and I was like, Man, you know what? Like, do I want to spend this money? And so I like just left it in the cart. And then two days later I had a discount code to buy it. And it took like 30 or 40% off of the, of the item I was buying. And so I was like, well, sweet, now I'm going to buy it. Nice. And it's probably all due to what we were talking about before there. I'm sure their stats say the longer it goes on, the less likely you are to buy. So they're looking at it as, Hey, we'd rather make a, at least some kind of sale versus no sale. Interesting. I've never heard that before, but that's, that's awesome. Um, all right. Well, the last thing is, um, like Patrick said, um, there is a workbook available on winmakegive.com. Um, and we, you can join me again um, next Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we'll be going through uh, episode five. So does anybody Thanks, else Troy. have any questions or anything else to add? Thank you. Thank you. All right. You're well, welcome. It's always we'll good. Video too, if you guys want to reference it again. Thanks, Troy. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.